Alright, what is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a reflection, a sobering reflection on Chelsea and Frank Lampard's humiliating defeat to Manchester United in the Premier League. Before we do get into today's content, I would like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon to keep it locked because you know what, I upload every single day and you wanna know when I'm uploading content, right? Oh yeah, you can like the video as well, that would help me out a lot. All right, four nil away at Old Trafford, Frank Lampard's first game managing Chelsea competitively. Now, the scoreline is an embarrassment Let's be honest, I mean, 4-0, it's, it's really revenge for when Jose brought his Manchester United to Stamford Bridge and he got slapped about 4-0. But you know what? There are differences in those games. When Chelsea won 4-0, it could have been more. It was total dominance. But this game away at Old Trafford, it wasn't like that. So like I said, the scoreline was embarrassing, but there were a few reasons that caused this to happen. And you know, certain people are at fault, and I'm not, Frank is not completely innocent in this, but I'm gonna go into it a bit more. But before I do, I do wanna say, if you haven't seen my match review from yesterday, Go and watch it because I completely break down what happened. Um, I take notable situations throughout the 90 minutes like I usually do and I basically give you the lowdown on what happened and why. So after this video or pause this video and now check it out, whatever, go check out that video at some point. Now I'm sure if you have seen my video from yesterday you'll know that at half time and full time Chelsea dominated the stats in that game. More possession, more passes, uh, more completed passes, more shots, more shots on goal, less fouls, etc, etc. But regardless to Chelsea having the lion's share of possession and all those other stats, they got slapped about 4-0. There's a few important factors I want to highlight now from you know, 24 hours or however long it's been reflecting on that game. Firstly, Zuma conceding a penalty. Like I said before in the previous video, this is the first penalty he's ever conceded. Terrible time to do it, and obviously that changes the complexion of the game when Chelsea were dominating that first half. Sure, they were wasting chances, but in terms of where you think the game was going, it looked like the game was for Chelsea. So Rashford converts the penalty and the narrative changes slightly, but that's still, even at that point, Chelsea looked good. That's not where it went wrong. One of the big things where it went wrong, and it pains me to say this, was Cesar Azpilicueta. He's had some sort of rapid decline of late. Shades of Ivanovic when he suddenly just fell off a cliff and had to basically leave Chelsea. Now, I've said it before on my channel and I will say it again. Cesar Azpilicueta is a very good 1v1 defender, right centre back or even right back depending on how the team play. Remember when Chelsea played against Manchester City twice last season when they won 2-0 at home and when they played incredibly well in the League Cup final. Chelsea were prepared to soak up pressure and that's where Cesar Azpilicueta plays incredibly well, sitting deep, one-on-one -on -one defending, getting the ball and getting it out. But when he's asked to actually play like a modern day fullback which has to be a dynamic runner, not only is he poor at executing offensive moves like that, he becomes a huge weak point in the Chelsea side. And nothing, never has it been so evident than yesterday against Manchester United. Let me get my phone up for some stats quickly. So, Azpilicueta against Manchester United at Old Trafford conceded possession 22 times. 22. Now, you... Get, you might see like Eden Hazard used to maybe get 12 or 15, which is a lot, but you'd understand it. It's because he's a creative player in the final third, taking chances, making things happen. But when your fullback makes 22 errors like that, that is astronomically poor. He also committed more fouls than any other Chelsea player. Unlike his opposite fullback Emerson, Azpilicueta offered nothing offensively. So Emerson had four shots, three were on target, which is pretty decent. He, um, he attempted some runs, he actually completed a decent dribble, and he won a corner. Azpilicueta offered absolutely nothing offensively. And in fact, he only completed one cross out of the bunch he attempted. So, I hate to roast Dave, but that was an absolutely dismal performance. And you know what? You can make the argument that he was at fault for Man United's second and third goal, which were the goals that took the game away from Chelsea. At 1-0, it was just that penalty. 
But if you look at how Man United score those second and third goals, Azpilicueta should be better positioned to prevent one, if not one, two of those goals. You know, a good defensive switched on right back basically prevents those goals. The first one, or the second goal, his first mistake was a really bad mistake, and obviously 90 seconds later, or whenever it is they score the second, it kind of looks like he's in his own head, not sulking, but like being negative about his first mistake, and he's not switched on enough to prevent the, the next goal. So yeah, I don't wanna hate on Cesar Azpilicueta, he's an excellent Chelsea servant, he's always been like a seven out of 10 for Chelsea throughout the years. But he is a captain figure, I know he's technically the captain, but he has kind of those captain attributes as well. But god damn, I, I, I'm quite a pragmatic, analytical dude. Now, I do believe in the Rhys James hype purely because I've seen what he can do. But after watching, you'd think that maybe Azpilicueta would see out the first, like, seven months of the season. Hopefully Rhys James can come in, but I'll tell you what, those alarms are flashing now, and when... Azpilicueta was such a weak link in that side. Rhys James is bombing up and down and he's probably performing a lot better defensively in that game. Right, so next up, the other thing I want to talk about is obviously wasted chances. I know Chelsea did not get the rub of the green. They were hitting the post two or three times, certainly twice in the first half, I think again in the second half. So, you know, the woodwork condemned Chelsea in that game. Chances where Mason Mount should have taken a shot or squared it and instead he just scuffed it. Loads of other chances in the final third that just, you know, didn't really happen. Or they forced a whole bunch of saves out of David De Gea. So, a good game from De Gea, you'd argue, but finishing needs to be better. The good promising thing from Chelsea is chances are being created. In the final third, they have the ability, they're not, they don't look stumped. Like, Sorry's football, when it wasn't working, it still looked safer than what Frank's doing now. But when Sarri's football works systemically, it could be great, a bit like Pep Guardiola or whatever. But the benefit of Frank Lampard's approach for Chelsea is they'll always look like they can do something. They'll never look stumped in the you know final third or midfield third doing an offensive passage of play. So that's a positive just sort of needed better finishing. I said in my um, review yesterday that I feel that with a diamond midfield and two strikers, Chelsea could have done a lot better in that game, but it would have been a risky formation to uh, to start, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing, right? I was actually really impressed with Tammy Abraham saying that. Obviously he hit the post, but he his runs, he puts a lot of pressure on, stuff you wouldn't expect from Olivier Giroud. The more I think about it, the more I think that Lampard's attempt or his tactical approach will suit Tammy Abraham and probably won't suit Olivier Giroud. When Giroud came on, no additional confidence was offered that Chelsea would even score a goal, really. I think Tammy Abraham's issue is he got frustrated. He's a 21-year-old kid who had some chances and the game was getting away from him, but stylistically, I think he could do well. Right, so what have we got so far? Zuma making a clumsy, horrendous, unnecessary mistake in the first half conceding his first ever career Premier League penalty, mm, great. Uh, Cesar Aspilicueta, disaster class, God bless him, don't hate on the guy, but it's looking worrying. Poor finishing by the forwards, yet a positive look at things because there's creativity there, there just needs to be things changed, and maybe the mentality can't sort of collapse. And another thing I want to talk about, it's Frank Lampard's basically game plan. Now generally a 4-2-3-1 is a good go-to formation in the Premier League and I won't dispute that, I can understand why he went for it in this game. Me talking about how a diamond would have worked against that opposition is hindsight, you know, Solskjaer probably knew Frank wouldn't go for a diamond in this game, therefore he made an appropriate game plan, yada yada yada. But the thing is, this happened with Derby as well. Frank Lampard keeps way too many space between the lines. Now maybe this is because he wants to be open and attacking, which is great in possession. He can tell his players to make certain runs and occupy certain spaces when they're in a good offensive passage of play, but in transition, Chelsea is so poor at the moment. And the space between the defensive line and the midfield is, is often massive, and this was a huge problem for his derby side as well. They were the two sort of main negative attributes of his derby side, keeping those space between the lines, as well as defending set pieces. Now, I don't think Chelsea are gonna be any better at defending set pieces, but that remains to be seen. We'll report back throughout the season on that, 
but in terms of a compact shape or out of possession space between the lines or even in possession being prepared for the transition or the breakaway really really poor especially if the fullbacks have gone forward emerson often stays forward which is fine he actually looked like a really decent weapon yesterday despite everything but if asplaqueta is forward and this one centre back's more forward than the other. If Rashford's breaking through and there's not a proper offside trap, Chelsea are gonna be stitched up. Nearly, nearly swore there, didn't. Especially against young, pacey forwards like Martial, Marcus Rashford, Dan James, you know, etc. If the defenders get split and there's too much space between the line, no one can get back to cover. There can be loads of problems, and there can be a combination between two opposition breaking forwards that can just carve a square around the remaining centre back or two even and just cause big problems for either one on one with the keeper or if the other forwards manage to advance behind the last line square it around the keeper carved open easy clinical counter-attacking goal Chelsea and Frank Lampard need to be incredibly aware of this because this is the Premier League's bread and butter this is what teams know they have to do be physical soak up pressure and be rapid on the break if you're not a Liverpool uh, Manchester City a Tottenham Hotspur even as well this is how you can play an incredibly effective game in the Premier League Solskjaer <laughs> To his credit has obviously seen that and this is the kind of team he's building obviously harry Maguire and aaron wambasaka were excellent defensively in that game but this is how he's going to approach the league and this has been the case for a few years now hell even leicester city won the premier league doing it when they were five thousand to one so if you not if you haven't got galactico quality players to play a certain way or your philosophy so well drilled in that you think it will be unbeatable in the Premier League. I'm talking about Maurizio Sarri's and Chelsea's great vision which kind of didn't work in the end but that's what they went for and he did, he did well in the Premier League but you get what I'm saying. So I get how Frank Lampard wants to be direct, creative and take risks. That's exciting. Chelsea fans will enjoy that at Stamford Bridge. He's a club legend. He loves scoring goals from midfield. He wants his midfielders to score goals. He wants some impressive combinations. It is hard to remember after a 4-0 dropping that Chelsea played some really good football in that game yesterday at Old Trafford. Man United scored the goals, but there were counter-attacking goals. It looks great, there's nothing wrong with counter-attacking football. It's exciting. But when Chelsea were in possession, they were doing excellent combinations. Stuff in the final third that Man United had no answer for. They were knocking about on the ground well, and if not, they were lobbing over the centre-backs or whoever was in the box. Looking really good, it was exciting football. Chelsea were good breaking, but when they lost possession, they were screwed. So as exciting as Chelsea were in terms of carving out chances and playing exciting, expansive football, it all means nothing if you waste your chances and the opposition team are really good on the break and clinical, which was Manchester United down to a T yesterday. You could maybe get away with it a little bit more if you have a really, really settled defense. But when you have a Kurt Zuma who generally played very badly and just did some clumsy stuff, got booked, conceded that penalty, and just wasn't good defensively, and then you've got one of your defenders like Aspilicueta, who should be a lot better, having one of the worst games of his career, then it's a recipe for a 4 nil drubbing away at Old Trafford. Credit to Solskjaer, he did what he needed to do, and you know what, Manchester United, if they keep playing a solid counter-attacking football with, you know, Maguire and Lindelof sitting deep with ram making tackle after tackle after tackle when they just play with two pacey uh, strikers on the break man united absolutely could comfortably sit in top four this season we'll have to see how it gets on if their midfield can cope against a different formation maybe that dominates midfield and takes the ball out wide a bit more but in terms of how frank lampard wanted to play yesterday they had the answer to that essentially. Frank Lampard's defence let him down, his team's finishing let him down, and in terms of the counter-attacking play to his game plan, sadly, Solskjaer, he had the cards. Anyway, so this video was a little bit more of a broken down version of what really happened yesterday. I will always do these um, match reviews where I go a little bit more into detail for the guys who want a bit more of the linear narrative, but this video was really just a sort of just highlight some talking points man and talk about how what frank needs to do in the future and the concerns for chelsea so i'm going to wrap it up now guys 
also I want to let you know that I'm thinking of doing some live streaming this I've got a great camera in my studio here but I'm thinking of buying like a webcam uh, camera for my little office where I edit and maybe just do some streams in the evening what do you think get down in the comments would you enjoy that would you tune in to streams that I do in the evening talk about football and Chelsea etc let me know if you'd like that in the comments below and also comment more about that disaster class yesterday from Azpilicueta and other player performances in the Chelsea loss to Manchester United. Remember also you can support the channel by becoming a patron to my Patreon channel, gain exclusive access to Q&A videos that I do with you guys. For one dollar a month, link is in the description and hey you might just feel like you want to support my channel by giving one dollar a month. Also, follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That is at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. And that's it from me, guys. I'm going to keep it moving. So enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'm going to get it how I'm living. I'm going to walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back